let's move on to the heavyweight division. I mean, like, there's not too much to talk about in terms of the fight, but obviously what's next is going to be huge. Tom Masvidal did what he normally does. First round stoppage. Very impressive. Quick work by the Englishman, and it looks like he's headed to New York to be the alternate at UFC 309. He's open to it, and that's what the UFC wants. It's not official. That's where Jones versus Miocic is taking place, and I think it's on November 9th, if you're wondering. Uh, what did you think of this goes? Uh, like I say, not much to go over with this uh, quick KO. Curtis Blades, the wrestler, chose not to wrestle, instead throw hands, and uh, he lost. Yeah, I looked like a fool at the end of this one because I, I was telling people for weeks, like, I feel like we're overlooking Blades a little bit. I thought, I honestly thought he'd give him a harder time, but he never used the one tool that Tom Aspinall probably prepared for the most. And that was his wrestling, right? Uh, Tom, on the other hand, great game plan. He looked like a guy that was like on his fourth title defense or something. He looked like he had been there multiple times. He came into the fight in great shape. He said all the right things. Uh, he was patient. And like I said, the game plan was was excellent. It was just another solid performance from Tom Aspinall. And what he does at the end of every fight, not every fighter does this, he leaves you wanting more. You want to see him right away. And I love that about a fighter. And Tom Aspinall has just been incredible so far. Goes, is he the best heavyweight on the planet at this moment? And that includes me asking about John Jones and, uh, and uh, Francis Ngannou. That's such a difficult question because, you know, at the end of the day, you – for as destructive as Tom Aspinall has been, there are still a few questions that you would like to have answered, right? Like, what would he be like in championship rounds? It's such an important thing when you're talking about fighters at this this level. What happens when he gets put on his back? But at the same time, we don't, we can't really have answers for that because he's just so destructive. Like, I honestly think if you look at it, you look at Francis Ngannou. He hasn't had a, an MMA fight in a while, neither has John Jones. Two and a half I, years for Ngannou. I think I'm pretty comfortable saying, yeah, I think he is. Mm -hmm. Danny, let's lead off with that. Well, no, let's get your reaction to the fight. I know it was quick. And then I want you to answer who is the best heavyweight on the planet at this moment. My reaction is, damn, like Tom Aspinall is unreal. This guy is just a ridiculous talent. I mean, just back to back, he's just running through all these heavyweights. How many first round stoppages does, an, does he have in his record? And if they make it out of the first, he makes sure to put him out in the second. This guy's just incredible. And it's just incredible how humble he is, too. Like, you would think that in his post-fight interview, he, he would have something to say to John Jones and the rest of the division. And look, he's got all the record to back it up and be brash and cocky and this and that. But he's the most humble guy out there. So props to um, Tom Aspinall fantastic performance and as far as who's the best heavyweight on the planet i think this is a pretty easy answer it's him it's him look at what he's done sporting wise who is the most relevant heavyweight right now it is him john jones hasn't fought in forever his only victory has uh came against Cyril Gan, who took the fight on short notice this this and that i mean you can't compare that to what everything that tom aspinall has done in the last few years to me it's pretty easy tom aspinall is the he best heavyweight on the planet uh, and I, I don't, whatever Nolan's going to say next, I don't know if he's going to agree with me or not, but um, there's nobody that can change my mind on that. Well, Nolan, you're up. Uh, reaction to the fight, and is uh, Tom Aspinall the best heavyweight in the world as, right now? As much as I want to argue with Danny, I can't. Um, right now, at this point in time, smart I don't man, know how you can deny man. him. I mean, he's the most proven heavyweight. Um, he has gone out there and beat, ran through a number of different top contenders, some of them in a minute's time. Um, he's the guy. I mean, I don't think you could craft. Sure, there's there's areas he can improve in, but I don't think conceptually you could craft a more perfect heavyweight. I mean, the guy goes in there. You know his fights are going to be quick. You know he's going to get a finish. Um, you know he's going to carry himself so well, too. What a great representative of the sport. Um, you know, he, he has a great personality, but um, he's pretty classy. He's professional. So I think he just checks so many boxes. And I think with this performance, he's finally kind of crossed over into to maybe having that sort of mainstream appeal. Like, I feel like the buzz coming out of this about him fighting John is way more than it was uh, him coming out of the interim fight, despite having that belt. So I think that was massive for his brand on Saturday. I think he's really got the MMA world buzzing. I mean, even Dane is up there kind of sure. He's still committed to the Steve Bay Jones fight that I don't think he'll ever let go of. But at the same time, like he's just very much acknowledging like that is a fantastic fight. So um what a, like I said, what a great representative of the sport. What a great fighter. And how awesome is it that we get to see 
how him continue to compete and potentially align himself for that John Jones fight. Um, if John's willing to take one more after the Steve Bay fight. Danny, somehow Democrats told Biden, you need to get out, dog. Right. And that's the most powerful position on the planet. Can somehow the matchmakers or the fans or anyone at the UFC go, Dana, you got to scrap that fight, dog. And go with Aspinall and Jones and not Asp and not Jones versus Miocic. I feel like there's gotta be people telling Dana that. I mean, look, sure, like on paper, we, us that we're OGs, we've been around this game for quite some time. Like John Jones versus Stipe Miocic, you hear that, and okay, that has a nice ring to it, right? Like we know these guys have tons of history and they represent a lot in this sport. But dude. I really question what's the popularity today of Stipe Miocic. He, he hasn't fought in forever, and his most recent fight, he didn't look great. We know that there's been a huge turnover of the fan base. I would argue that Tom Aspinall might be even more well-known than Stipe Miocic at this point in time. Sure, Miocic might be able to drag out some of those old-school guys that maybe are not tuning in as much, and they hear the Miocic name. They want to see him fight one more time. But really... Um, I don't know. I think Aspinall is the guy. I hope they make this fight. This is the fight to make. John Jones versus Tom Aspinall. It is the most relevant fight to make. And the, as Aspinall continues to fight and continues to win, that fight with Jones and Miocic just seems more and more and more and more irrelevant. Like, by the time this rolls out in November, if it even does, uh, I think we're all just going to be looking at Aspinall and being like, yeah, whatever happens, that's still our guy. That's still the best heavyweight in the planet. And on top of it all, Nolan, the winner might retire. They both might retire. And then they'd be back in another pickle where now they just go, oh, remember that guy in England that was the alternate and weighed in and you didn't see him? Um, he's the champ now. I mean, like the, the coronation is part of the fun of it, you know, and, and if you're a veteran champ, you let that. That's why you let that guy challenge you, you know, and if, it, if you win, you get a ruby. You're still the champ, title defense, and if you lose, then it's the coronation. It's time for the new guy. But are you? I mean, what what are your thoughts here, man? My head's about to explode on this topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really hope we see it. Um, you know, I think John's kind of always uh, gone to the beat of his own drum, and I do think there is an element of him that really just wanted to have one more fight. Like before, even Tom was in the picture, I think there was an element of him that was just kind of getting towards, at least for now, not feeling like he wanted to fight beyond it. Um, now that this exists, though, man, I, I think th the fact that this Stipe fight is happening, there's an element that's an underlying element to this fight promotion, which is the fact that the, the waiting game is going on. There's the build, right? Like, I think the build is such a big part when it comes to a fight truly get, being big, right? Like, people talking about this, people wanting it. It's contingent on certain things. Now you have Tom Aspinall. He won. He's ready to go. If John goes out there and beats Stipe then I think it will take things to the next level. So while we can debate of whether or not which fight should be next, if that Steve Bay fight does happen next, which it sounds like it will, I do think it adds another layer of, of people talking about it, people buzzing about it. I'm sure that fight week, even though John's going to be fighting Steve Bay, Tom Aspinall is going to be brought up quite constantly in the, in the media day, in the interviews. And then you'll have that moment if John wins where it's like, all right, well, now it's here. Now it's time to, to try to plan this thing out. Let's see if John wants it. Let's see what's going to happen. Like, I think there's, we sometimes overlook the fact that there is that build that, that plays right into the UFC's hands and making a fight so big, um, you know, that's been talked about for a year and a half. One year ago, I didn't like it. One year later, I, I like it even less. How about you guys? Um, I'm, so, I, I'm just going through all the scenarios. John wins. And then, they and then bring for, us, home, but for then, us, I'm, sick the, of, I'm so sick of talking about it. <laughs> you know, by the and, time I get there, I'll be like, please just – Please just fight, you know. Like I'd almost not have Tom family. there. <laughs> why even have Tom there at, say that. at that point? Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say that. Like, honestly, why are we here? Right? Aren't we here to find out who the best fighter in the world is? Are we answering that question with Stipe Miocic versus John Jones? We're not. Nope. So why are we doing it? And at the end of the day, let's just say something happened to Miocic and he can't fight. Do you really want to take the heavyweight championship of the world and pull a curtain back and go? How about you? You ready? Like, that doesn't make any sense. I almost don't want him to take a fight under that, those pretenses. Like, I want to build up. I think it's important. I think he, it's so ridiculous. Every day that goes by, this fight gets even more and more ridiculous. And one thing we never talk about is, what if John, John Jones doesn't make it to the fight? What if it's Miocic and Aspinall? Like, it, it's such a mess, dude. It's so <laughs> stupid to even do this at this point. I really don't understand it. And you know what? I will tell you this, if Stipe Miocic wins that fight, 
Dana White will be unbearable, guys. He'll be almost like Thanos when he puts that last jewel in his glove and just glows and shit. Like, we'll never hear the end of it. What do you mean? I told you guys, Stipe Jones, you guys crapped oh, on it. Before. Oh, like, I, 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 I thought be you meant unbearable. I thought you meant the way he's and that could actually Jones on know. every podcast being the most dangerous man that's ever walked the planet or whatever, even shifting aside the Muhammad Ali's of the world and the Mike Tyson's. And if you go in a closet with John Jones, you, you don't come out or you're parted <laughs> into or <laughs> this is such a big loss when you because honestly, honestly, guys, what have we been talking about? If you really want to know who the best heavyweight in the world is, I don't even know that you throw John Jones and Stipe Miocic's name in there. I think that's between Francis Ngannou and Tom Aspinall. But we don't get to have that fight. We have to settle right now. Yeah. I mean, the dude's 1-0 and as a heavyweight. Like, again, I'll give him his flowers. Greatest of all time is John Jones. Greatest side heavyweight of all time is John Jones. Greatest champion of all time. I'd say, well, I think it's John Jones and Demetrius Johnson. They're tied. But because this guy won two titles, I'd probably go, all right, I'll lean John Jones. But greatest heavyweight on the planet at this moment, he, yeah, you're right. He might not even be the best or number two if you still think it's Nganu. I mean, I don't know, man, but it's oh, it's such a force down our throats, and I can't stand it, man. I, I love chopping it up with you guys. Hopefully, I don't drive you nuts on the topic because it does come up a lot. But, man, after seeing Aspen, I'll just dispose of Blades, disposed of them like that, you know, and – Again, Jones is only one and zero as a as a heavyweight, right? And he struggled in his last few fights as a light heavyweight, like three and a half years before he did that as a heavyweight. So I'm not seeing this monster that he is. He was he was a monster at light heavyweight, but at the end he was really really struggling. I'm seeing a monster in Tom Aspinall. Yeah, he's yeah, the man. best heavyweight on the planet. I think that's we can all agree on that. I think we we, we should move on from this topic. We